नमस्कार वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज आर एस रघु एंड विद मी इज रेणुका आर एस ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्स ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर वी हैड लाइफ India calls upon Pakistan to address shortcomings in ICJ Review and Reconsideration Bill 2020 and comply with ICJ judgments. US President Joe Biden and Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin described first face-to-face -face talks in Geneva as constructive. Nepal Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli defends dissolution of the House of Representatives. China launches first crew of astronauts on board Shenzhou 12 to Tiangong Space Station. ICC Test World Cup final between India and New Zealand to begin tomorrow at Rose Bowl Stadium in Southampton. Rafael Nadal pulls out of Wimbledon and Olympics. And in Euro 2020, Ukraine beat North Macedonia 2 goals to 1. As many states are relaxing lockdown norms we advise our listeners not to lower their guard as the covid-19 pandemic remains a threat to our health please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow the four simple steps wear a face mask maintain two gas ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene and get vaccinated For any covid related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 011 and 1075 and now the news in detail India has called upon Pakistan to take appropriate steps to address the shortcomings in the International Court of Justice Review and Reconsideration Bill 2020 and to comply with the judgments of the ICJ in letter and in spirit the bill has been passed by the national assembly of pakistan briefing media this evening external affairs ministry spokesman arindam bakshi said the bill codified into law the earlier ordinance with all its shortcomings the bill codifies into law the earlier ordinance frankly with all its shortcomings it does not create a machinery with to facilitate effective review and reconsideration of shri jadhav's case as mandated by the judgment of the international court of justice the icj had ruled that pakistan was in breach of its international obligation because of the failure to provide consular access to shri jadhav the ordinance and now the bill invites the municipal courts in pakistan to decide whether or not any prejudice has been caused to shri jadhav on account of the failure to provide consular access This is clearly breach of the basic tenet that municipal courts cannot be the arbiter of whether a state has fulfilled its obligations under international law. Not only this, it further invites the municipal court to sit in appeal as it were over the judgment of the ICJ. We call upon Pakistan to take appropriate steps to address the shortcomings in the bill, comply with the judgment of the ICJ in letter and spirit. Meanwhile on the question of Pakistan's foreign minister writing to the United Nations Security Council expressing concern over India's administrative changes in Jammu and Kashmir Mr Bakshi reiterated that union territory of Jammu and Kashmir remains an integral part of India The union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India no amount of questioning can change this reality also cross border terrorism is unacceptable and no amount of justification can make it acceptable Meanwhile on external affairs minister Dr S Jay Shankar's recent visits to Qatar and its significance with respect to Afghanistan Mr Bakshi said the issue of Afghanistan was discussed during external affairs minister Dr S Jay Shankar's visit to Qatar As Qatar is involved in the Afghanistan peace process uh, the issue of Afghanistan was also discussed during EM's conversations US special representative for Afghanistan reconciliation Zalmay Khalilzad happened to be in Doha during this period of uh, EM's visit and called on EM to brief him on the recent developments regarding Afghanistan US President Joe Biden and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin agreed at their first summit to resume arms control talks and to return ambassadors to each other's capitals after they were withdrawn earlier this year. This was their first face-to-face -face bilateral talks in Geneva where the two leaders were seeking to mend US-Russia relations. 
The two leaders have praised their talks in Geneva that lasted four hours less time than was scheduled. Speaking first after the talks, the Russian president said, Mr. Biden is an experienced statesman and the two spoke the same language. Mr. Putin described the meeting as constructive and without hostility. He said it had the leaders' desire to understand each other. Speaking shortly afterwards, Mr. Biden said they did not need to spend more time talking and there was now a genuine prospect to improve relations with Russia. The two sides agreed to begin a dialogue on nuclear arms control. I did what I came to do. Number one, identify areas of practical work our two countries can do to advance our mutual interests and also benefit the world. Two, communicate directly that the United States will respond to actions that impair our vital interest or those of our allies. And three, to clearly lay out our country's priorities and our values so we heard it straight from me. And I must tell you, the tone of the entire meetings, I guess it was a total of four hours, was good, positive. There wasn't any uh, strident action taken. Well, we disagreed. I disagreed, stated where it was. Where he disagreed, he stated, but it was not done in a hyperbolic atmosphere. Both the leaders said Russia and the U.S. shared a responsibility for nuclear stability and would hold talks on possible changes to their recently extended New START Arms Limitation Treaty. They also said they would return ambassadors to each other's capitals. However, there was a little sign of agreement on other issues, including cyber security, Ukraine and the fate of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Meanwhile, the U.S. House of Representatives on Wednesday overwhelmingly voted in favor of creating a federal holiday commemorating Juneteenth. The Juneteenth National Independence Day is commemorated on June the 19th to celebrate the day in 1865 when the last enslaved African Americans learned that they were free. The Juneteenth until now has been the unofficial day marking the end of slavery in the United States. The measure cleared the Senate by unanimous consent on Tuesday. With the House passing it in a 415-14 to 14 vote, the bill now heads to President Joe Biden for his signature. In Hong Kong, 500 Hong Kong police officers raided the office of Apple Daily, a newspaper known for its critical coverage of China and Hong Kong on Thursday. Five senior executives, including the editor-in-chief, Ryan Law, has been arrested. The Hong Kong government, in a statement on Thursday, said that the National Security Department had arrested the five directors on suspicion of collusion with a foreign country. According to reports, Apple Daily broadcasted the raid live on its Facebook page, showing how officers set up a cordon around the complex and walked through the building. Iran heads to the polls for the presidential election on June the 18th. The country is under the throes of a surging COVID-19 pandemic. The crushing sanctions after the U.S. withdrew from the 2015 nuclear deal has brought Iran's economic condition to the fore ahead of the elections. According to reports, two days before Iran's presidential election, three of the six men in the race withdrew their candidacies Wednesday. Ultra-conservative cleric Ibrahim Raisi is the front-runner in the elections. The winner of the elections would replace President Hassan Rouhani, who has served the maximum two consecutive terms. This is All India Radio, giving you the world news. The center is disseminating awareness of national helpline numbers for the benefit of citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The helpline number of the Health and Family Welfare Ministry is 1075. The child helpline number is 1098. For senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the helpline number is 14567. The helpline number of National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhans, for psychological support is 08046110007. Ayush COVID-19 counseling helpline number is 14443. And MyGov WhatsApp help desk number is 9013151515. Welcome back to the World News. India is registering a significant decline in active case loads and fresh cases of coronavirus. With this, the recovery rate is continuously improving in the country and has now reached 95.93%. 
The Health and Family Welfare Ministry has said the active case loads presently comprise 2.78% of the cumulative positive cases and it is continuously declining. On the vaccination front, India has administered over 26 crore 55 lakh COVID vaccine doses to the beneficiaries so far. Health and Family Welfare Ministry said over 34,63,000 vaccine doses were administered to the beneficiaries within 24 hours. India's Ministry of External Affairs on the issue of the requirement of vaccination for outgoing or returning Indian students to the U.S. has asserted that everyone concerned in the matter is interested in ensuring the safe resumption of classes for the students. Look, there is no uniformity in these requirements. The U.S. government has clarified that the vaccination is not a mandatory requirement for traveling to the U.S. for our students. I also understand that there are multiple conversations going on between our students and the universities. We would obviously support our students. I think everyone concerned is interested in ensuring that the students are able to reach the universities and undertake regular classes. And we hope that a constructive solution is found. Now let us take a look at the coronavirus updates from around the world. Japan has approved lifting a state of emergency in Tokyo on June the 20th, a month before the Olympics begin. The capital city Tokyo and various other regions have been under a coronavirus emergency since April 25th. Australia raised the recommended age for receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine to 60 on Thursday. The move came after a 52-year-old woman died of rare blood clots in her brain after receiving the shot. Australian Health Ministry urged that everyone under 60 in Australia is now urged to get the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine. A new study, REACT1 in the UK, has found that despite the success of the vaccination rollout, the prevalence of COVID-19 infections was rising rapidly during the late May and early June. The period coincides with Delta becoming the dominant variant. The REACT1, one of the country's largest studies into COVID-19 infections in England. Meanwhile, new data published earlier in the week by PHE showed that the AstraZeneca vaccine is 92% effective and the Pfizer vaccine is 96% effective against hospitalization from the Delta variant after two doses. UAE's Abu Dhabi has become the first city to receive the coronavirus Sotrovimab medication. Health officials had approved emergency use of the medicine. They added that it reduced hospitalization and fatalities by as much as 85% if administered in time. France is lifting mandatory mask wearing outdoors and will halt an 8-month nightly coronavirus curfew on June the 20th. Announcing the decision, Prime Minister Jean Castex said the requirement for people to wear masks outside is in much of the country would be lifted from Thursday, with some exceptions. The night curfew will be lifted on Sunday, 10 days earlier than expected. Masks will still be required outdoors on public transport, in stadiums and other crowded places. And the COVID-19 situation in Bangladesh continued to be worrying as it reported the highest number of deaths in a single day since May the 3rd. India expressed hope that Sri Lanka remains mindful of the excellent bilateral relations with India and of its maritime security. Spokesperson of the External Affairs Ministry, Mr. Arindam Bhakshi, made the comment in reply to a question on Beijing's role in the Colombo Port City project on Thursday. We expect Sri Lanka will remain mindful of our excellent bilateral cooperation, including for mutual security in our shared environment, which includes the maritime domain. As regards our projects, India has a very extensive portfolio of development partnership projects in Sri Lanka, and we are in regular contact with Sri Lankan authorities regarding the implementation of these projects. Nepal Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli defended his government's controversial decision to dissolve the House of Representatives. On Thursday, Mr. Oli told the Supreme Court that it is not up to the judiciary to appoint a premier as it cannot undertake the legislative and the executive functions of the state. The Supreme Court had issued a show cause notice on the 9th of June to the office of the Prime Minister and the President's office to furnish a written response within 15 days. The country's apex court received Oli's response via the office of the Attorney General on Thursday, according to reports. 
North Korea's leader Kim Jong Un has formally acknowledged that the country is facing food shortages. Addressing a meeting of senior leaders, Kim said the people's food situation is now getting tense. According to reports, he said the agricultural sector had failed to meet its grain targets because of last year's typhoons, which caused widespread flooding. There are some reports that food prices have spiked. North Korea has closed its borders to contain the spread of COVID-19. Trade with China has plummeted as a result. North Korea relies on China for food, fertilizer, and fuel. North Korea is also struggling under international sanctions imposed because of its nuclear programs. Meanwhile, a report published by the UK House of Commons Foreign Affairs Committee has claimed that autocratic nations like China are seeking to manipulate, undermine, or even break up multilateral organizations such as the WHO and Interpol. The committee, comprising of 11 MPs, warned that if the UK and its allies do not respond to the corrosive influence of states, including China, there is a very real risk that democratic states will lose multilateral organizations to authoritarian states. The report said that countries like China have done little to demonstrate that they wish to uphold the values that these organizations represent. The UK committee report found that China has been increasingly using aggressive methods, including bilateral economic leverage, to coerce states in multilateral organizations to back its position. In the wake of these developments, the report recommended that the UK should work with a coalition of like-minded states to publicly call out such attempts, undermining the present system. Minister for Loneliness in the UK and the Minister for Loneliness and Isolation in Japan held their first online meeting on Thursday during the Loneliness Awareness Week in the UK. The UK and Japan are two countries which have appointed ministers to tackle loneliness and increasing suicide rates in their respective countries. A statement by the UK government said that the UK and Japan firmly believe that tackling loneliness is an important international challenge. The two countries have agreed to strengthen bilateral cooperation on tackling loneliness. China has successfully sent its first astronauts to the country's Tiangong space station on board the Shenzhou-12, its first manned spacecraft since 2016. China Space Agency said Shenzhou-12 spacecraft carrying three male astronauts on board a long March 2F rocket docked with Tian, the main section of the Tiangong station, hours after blasting off from the Gobi Desert in northwest China today. The astronauts Nei Heisheng, Liu Boming and Tang Hongbo appeared before the media at a ceremony at the Huaquin Satellite Launch Center. The team expected to be on Tiangong for three months. Previous Chinese missions have been a month at most. The Shenzhou 12 is made up of three sections, an orbiter module, a return module and a propelling module and has 14 subsystems on board. The mission is the latest stage in China's ambitious plans to be the only country to own and run its own space station, expected to be completed less than two years from now. Tiangong will rival the International Space Station, ISS, a collaboration between the United States, Russia, Europe, Canada and Japan. Meanwhile, Brazil became the first South American country to join the Artemis Accords. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken congratulated Brazil on the signing on Tuesday. NASA's Artemis program seeks to develop the technologies and experience necessary to mount a historic human mission to Mars. India's Information Technology Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad on Thursday emphasized that government is not in favor of banning any platform. He said, however, they have to follow the law. He said, if half of the government is on Twitter, including Prime Minister and President, it shows how fair the government is. He bemoaned that when Capitol Hill in Washington was raided, Twitter blocked accounts of all, including the then President. These guidelines don't deal with the use of social media. They deal with the abuse and misuse of social media. So people can complain about their misuse when they are being defamed, when the woman's dignity is being compromised and all these. Others have followed, they have not followed. There is a proper rule, rule 7 of the guidelines, which says if you don't comply with the guidelines, then the consequences under section 79, you may lose your intermediary status. The 17th of June is the World Day to Combat Desertification and Drought. 
United Nations has said that this day is a unique moment to remind everyone that land degradation neutrality is achievable through problem solving, strong community involvement and cooperation at all levels. Union Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change Prakash Zavidkar has said that India is on track to achieve the target of land degradation neutrality set by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Mr. Zavedika said India will restore 26 million hectares of degraded land by 2030. Earlier, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressing the UN high-level dialogue on desertification, land degradation and drought said that India is assisting fellow developing countries to develop land restoration strategies in the spirit of South-South cooperation. And now a report from the business world. The Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange fell 179 points or 0.3% to close at 52,323. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange depreciated 76 points or 0.5% to settle at 15,691. In global equity markets, Asian shares fell as investors watched for market reaction after the U.S. Federal Reserve yesterday moved up its timeline for rate hikes. However, China's Shanghai Composite Index added 0.2% and Hong Kong's Hang Seng rose 0.4%. Japan's Nikkei 225 ended 0.9% down, South Korea's Kospi declined 0.4% and Singapore's Straits Times fell marginally to close almost flat. European shares were down in intraday trade. Crude oil prices dipped as a stronger U.S. dollar brought them off multi-year highs. In intraday trade, Brent crude prices were trading around $74.20 per barrel. Back home, gold prices plunged around 1,300 rupees at multi-commodity exchange for August contracts in sync with big fall in gold prices in the international markets. Gold was trading at around 47,200 rupees per 10 grams. Silver prices also tumbled 2,600 rupees to trade around 69,870 rupees per kilogram for July contracts when reports last came in. And in the forex market, the rupee witnessed a fall of 75 pesa against the US dollar to trade above the 74 rupee per dollar level. The local currency settled at 74 rupees and 8 pesa per US dollar. Anubha Rohatki for World News, All India Radio. In Sports Roundup, All India Radio brings you the latest news updates from the world of sports through the day. In football Euro 2020, Yarmolenko and Yaramchuk net a goal each to seal a 2-1 to -one victory for Ukraine over North Macedonia. Elioski scored the only goal for North Macedonia. Earlier in the match, North Macedonia's keeper Dmitrievski pulled off a brilliant save to deny Ukraine from the penalty spot. In the other Group B encounter, Denmark faced off against an informed Belgium. Denmark was a goal up at halftime. There was a moment's applause for Denmark's midfielder and Thalesma Christian Eriksen, who is recovering in hospital following a medical emergency in Denmark's opening game against Finland. Later tonight, the Netherlands will look to seal a spot in the round of 16 as they clash against Austria. In women's test cricket, India were 183 for the loss of four wickets in the first innings against England on the second day today when the reports last came in. This is the first time Indian women crit cricketers are playing England in a multi-format series. The two teams will also play three ODIs and three T20 internationals. Meanwhile, in tennis, Rafael Nadal has announced that he will not play in the months of Wimbledon and the Tokyo Olympics later this summer. The Spaniard, who lost in the French Open semi-final to Novak Djokovic last week, made the announcement through social media. With less than 37 days remaining for the start of the Tokyo Olympics, All India Radio brings a special series on India's medal prospects at the Sporting Extravaganza. Today we will talk about India's hope in the long jump event, Murli Shri Shankar. Born on the 27th of March 1999 in Palakkad, Kerala, long jump athlete Murli Shishankar has brought India immense pride by qualifying for the Tokyo Olympics. Shishankar set a national record of 8.26 meter at the Federation Cup Senior Athletics Championship in Patiala to secure his spot in Tokyo. In an exclusive interview with AIR News, Shishankar described his path to qualifying for the Olympics. Now my preparation is very good. I have to focus on recovery. 
बहुत क्वालिटी ट्रेनिंग में अभी फोकस कर रहे हैं क्योंकि अभी मेरे इवेंट को अभी सिर्फ चालीस दिन चालीस फोर्टी फोर्टी फाइव डेज टू फिफ्टी डेज रखा है क्योंकि मेरा क्वालिफाइंग राउंड होगा थर्टी फर्स्ट जुलाई को और फाइनल होगा सेकंड ऑगस्ट को तो उसी के लिए मैं बहुत फोकस हूँ तैयारी में बहुत अच्छा जा रहा है द एंटायर कंट्री कम्स टूगेदर इन विशिंग दैट शी शंकर मेक्स अ जायट लीव टू द टॉप ऑफ द पोडियम एट द टोक्यो ओलम्पिक्स सिद्धार्थ सिंह स्पोर्ट्स डिस्क Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Washington Post writes that Furor rages over FDA approval of controversial Alzheimer's drug. Wall Street Journal reports that path for Olympics clears after Japan declares end to state of emergency. The Guardian reports that the UN has said that the next pandemic drought is a hidden global crisis. The Globe and Mail writes that Swedish PM faces no confidence vote as government plunged into crises. Sydney Morning Herald reports that Helen Clark slams WHO for opposing China travel bans jury out on lab leak. Radio plays a key role in Ladakh today not just as an entertainment tool but with informative news bulletins and as a school for students during COVID-19 pandemic times. A retired instrumentalist and senior music composer Murup Namgyal's voice was Akashwani for Ladakhis for generation. All India Radio is celebrating its golden jubilee on 25th of this month. Our correspondent has filed this report. Before the entry of television, All India Radio was the only medium of entertainment for Ladakhis. Not just entertaining, but All India Radio helped in educating the people, reviving and encouraging the artists to express themselves. A 30 years experienced retired instrumentalist and senior music composer, Murup Namgyal's voice was Akashwani for Ladakhis for generations. In his 30 years of career in All India Radio lay, he worked in different capacities in almost all the section of the department radio lehne har field mein logon ko educate karne mein bahut aham role ada kiya tab radio hi ek aisa media tha jo har kone mein pahunchte the aur sarhad par bhi log sunte the bhule hue bite hue naaz gaane phir se zinda hue ladakh ki musiqi ke alawa apne hindustan ke bahut sare instruments ko bhi humne shamil kiya jammu kashmir delhi aur desh ke dusre shaharon mein bhi ladakh ki music concert pesh hue ladakh ko log pehchanne lage tab radio ka ले बोलते थे और आप ऑल इंडिया रेडियो ले विद रमेश चंद्र छतन ट्रशी ए आई आर न्यूज फ्रॉम ले लद्दाख द इंस्पायरिंग जर्नीज ऑफ हंड्रेड विमेन साइंटिस्ट हु रिटर्न टू साइंस आफ्टर ब्रेक इन करियर हैज बीन डॉक्यूमेंटेड इन अ बुक डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी थ्रू वेरियस कम्पोनेट ऑफ विमेन साइंटिस्ट स्कीम डब्ल्यू एस इज ड्रेसिंग चैलेंजेस कन्फ्रंटेड बाय विमेन हु डिजायर टू रिटर्न टू मेन स्ट्रीम साइंस This booklet represents select stories of women who completed their training under WOS C component of the scheme and are now achieving greater heights in their careers. Ministry of Science and Technology has said that this booklet can be a beacon of light for more Indian women. The booklet is available in both digital and print versions. It can be accessed on Department of Science and Technology's website. A quick look at the headlines once again. India calls upon Pakistan to address shortcomings in ICJ review and reconsideration bill 2020 and comply with ICJ judgments. US President Joe Biden and Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin describe first face-to-face -face talks in Geneva as constructive. Nepal Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli defends dissolution of the House of Representatives. China launches first crew of astronauts on board Shenzhou 12 to Tiangong Space Station. ICC Test World Cup final between India and New Zealand to begin tomorrow at Rose Bowl Stadium in Southampton. Rafael Nadal puts out of Wimbledon and Olympics. And in Euro 2020, Ukraine beat North Macedonia 2 goals to 1. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end let us listen to his favorite bhajan Vaishnavjan from artist from Iceland. Right. 
मतलब चाइना तो सेने पारी जे जे फिर पराई and with that we end this bulletin we'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of world news